Hello boys and girls, I'm Olli Huttunen, a filmmaker from Finland, and this is my virtual studio, where I recently put together my latest animation short film called The Dust Seeker. It was realized by utilizing the Unreal Game Engine, and now I want to share my experience with this production method and tell you about my process, what I used to make the animation. At the very beginning it is necessary to clarify what a game engine means and how it can be used to make a movie. Unreal Game Engine is a popular game engine developed by Epic Games, which is used to create and develop video games, simulations and virtual reality experiences. As its name suggests, it is widely used in the game developed industry, but among others, the engine is also used for architectural visualizations and other non-game applications. For the filmmakers, it offers facilities to build a virtual sets and scenes with the help of real-time computing technology. Everyone who has tried using Unreal has noticed that the real fun only starts when you learn to use different 3D model libraries and sets. This includes, for example, the Quixel Megascans library, which offers a huge number of different photo modeled objects and wonderful surface materials. In addition to this, Epic Games' own marketplace is also a very popular place, where you can find a huge number of 3D environments made by other users and other goods for sale. The making of my film also started with these resources. At the very beginning, I just happened to explore this 3D environment with the dry grass and interesting looking desert atmosphere. I had recently learned to use a tool called Ultra Dynamic Sky that simulates seasons and weather. It is a very powerful tool which you can adjust sky settings, edit clouds and weather conditions. With it I was able to create, for example, a sandstorm in an instant. When I managed to make the pushes and cross sway in the wind, I placed some more random carpets and scraps in this imaginary wasteland. This fateful looking landscape made me think that it would be interesting to place some lost character in the scene walking across the landscape. For the character creation I used a separate application called Character Creator 4. This program, produced by Reallusion, is a part of a larger software package and contains itself many libraries and marketplaces, where you can get all different kind of clothes and accessories to your character. I wanted my main character to look like a post-apocalyptic survivor, so I got a package with lots of Mad Max-styled racket clothes and props. After combining different jackets and hoods for a while, I was satisfied with the appearance of my character. Next I wanted to make my character drag painfully in a sandstorm, so I transferred it to another program called iClone 8, where I could build an animation for it. iClone has this very cool motion layer editor with which you can easily modify the basic movements into your own personal ones. For example, I took this basic walking cycle and changed it into the figure moving in a slightly crouched position, holding one hand for protection while walking in a sandstorm. And when I finished this walking animation, I exported it in FBX format and load it in to Unreal Engine. Back in the engine I placed my animated actor into the scene and move it so that it go along the desired path. In Unreal the scenes are built inside the sequencer. Here the virtual camera is adjusted 
and desired angles are set in place. Sequencer is like a video editing program inside the game engine. But even though it is possible to cut scenes inside the engine, I decided to output the animation as separate video clips and process them in a traditional way in a separate video editing program. I usually cut my videos on a Mac using Apple's Final Cut Pro, but in this case I didn't want to jump between two separate operating systems all the time, so I decided to keep an open mind and try something completely new. So I choose the CapCut program as the video editor for this project and I was surprised how clever and easy to use it was. It served my purpose perfectly when I finished editing the open scene that I just had animated in Unreal. <laughs> Actually, it was only at this point when I started to wonder if there were ingredients for a bigger story here. When I studied these first three images that I had created, I seriously began to think about what this is related to. Why is this character in that storm? Where is he trying to get to? And why there is a pitchfork in an opening image? The actual story started to take shape only when I decided to try this well-known tune in it. Music means a lot to me, and with it I can very easily imagine how the story will progress. This version of Chopin's Nocturne, arranged by Sebastian Bagal, immediately gave me an idea of how the story of this film could proceed. When we first meet our main character wandering alone in a sandstorm, we notice that the world around him is a very inconsolable and lost place. Our hero is in possession of a valuable key with the logo of a grocery store on the keychain. And now, by chance, he has drifted in a storm in the middle of the ruined town on the street corner of which the signs of that same shop can be seen. We feel empathy and relief when our hero finally gets to the safe in the sheltered place with enough food and electricity. And the best thing is that he finds a shower in the store's staff room where he can finally wash himself. But as soon as the basic needs are satisfied, the person's morality steps in and tells us as a plot twist who our person really is and what he has done to get that precious key to this shelter. We see quick flashback phase where our person, moments earlier before the beginning, was chasing another person with a gun. The chased one tries to defend herself with the pitchfork, but when our protagonist noticed that she has the store key around her neck, he decided to murder her in a gold blood by shooting her. So this was the basic idea of a bit of a grim anti-hero story that I got inspired to make the rest of the animation film. And because of the sequence structure of that music served as a good framework for the length of the entire story, I thought this was a completely doable film to make. My goal was to use as many ready-made 3D assets as possible and see if I could build all the necessary virtual filming locations with them. Since I already knew how long the film would be and how the scenes would progress, my process for producing the animation sequences was very linear. I built and animated the scenes in the same order as the story itself progressed. I wanted to learn how to use the Unreal Engine better and take advantage of its real-time rendering power. 
so that I could export animation scenes out faster than in the usual image calculation process on the other 3D programs. I learned how to light the scenes using the new Lumen technology. And I also learned how to use the cloth simulation as the fabrics and part of the clothing swaying in the wind were important detail to achieve for the stormy atmosphere. For the character animation I used the popular Mixamo motion archive, but I also found a lot of useful movements from Reallusion's ActorCore library. Of course there will be moments where a 3D model has to be modified in a separate 3D program, so the Blender was the best software for me in such situations. Blender is by far the most useful basic program to know nowadays, because you can load and handle almost any 3D format into it. But during this project I came across a few individual points that I couldn't build directly inside the Unreal Engine. The best example of this is the shower scene, where I didn't manage to build good enough looking particle animation for the sequence where the sour water jets is viewed in a close-up. Although Unreal includes a very versatile Niagara particle systems, I had to use the After Effects program in this part of the animation. I also added some steam and water drops to the shower room in After Effects. For this I used video textures that I found on Envato Elements service. From there I also found a nice set of the dust particles that I could use as a layer detail directly in the video editing. So after all, the entire animation is quite a hybrid of different applications, material libraries and services. And everything is digital. It made me think that this kind of a one-man production would not be possible without the internet and today's powerful computer and graphics cards. My setup is pretty average. The entire project has been implemented on one PC with NVIDIA's 2070 RTX graphics card. One thing that I learned was that you can't have enough video memory to play with Unreal Engine. You learn to be very patient because Unreal crashes quite often. And opening different levels can sometimes be quite tedious job because you have to wait pretty long times to get all the objects compile and load up. But I think that all these glitches and errors are necessary features that you will learn to live with. Unreal is a huge and complex entity that is developed all the time. It seems that it is actually impossible to master it completely. I myself learned to understand only a very small part of it with this project. Anyway, I'm pretty proud that at all I managed to realize this short film with a game engine. If you haven't seen the final results, what kind of a movie the Dust Seeker turned out to be, you can watch the film here or click the link in the description. I hope that my story about making of the Dust Seeker was interesting to you and maybe you will be inspired to make movies of your own with the game engine. In any case, I think that it's an interesting topic to explore because it seems like this will be the way how the movies are made in the future. Until the next time, thanks for watching.